In this video, I'll show you how you can solve your problems by breaking them down into small, manageable chunks. Okay, let's get started here. So, I got a message from Terry, and Terry said, Hey Paul, how can I add audio speech management to the feedback so that it plays my try again message or correct message as appropriate? I see in the advanced actions window where I can designate play audio in addition to the show hide commands, but I'm trying to use the text to speech voice to script my audio. Thanks for your help. Now I should say that Terry did come up with a solution. I'm not sure if it's uh, the best solution, but what I have to say is that I find what works best is when you break these problems down. And I think this is why uh, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I, I, I'm able to look at a problem and break it down into small manageable pieces rather than trying to look at the whole thing and solve those problems. Uh, so that's definitely an issue. You know, if you have a, a standard quiz question, and let's just throw one in there. Um, let's just put that right here as an example. One of the things that would be particularly nice would be able to have the narration read the feedback or to say something similar to the feedback on all of your text captions for a multiple choice question. Why it doesn't work, and let me explain something that you need to think about here. Where this becomes a problem is that the feedback is not synchronous with, um, with your course, right? So when the correct message shows up, where is that on the timeline, right? The problem is, sure, you can go over to Properties and under the Properties Inspector for the correct feedback message and go to the Options tab and add audio so that when that appears, the audio is there. But there's no text-to-speech option. So one way you could do it is you could have a hidden slide that contains the text-to-speech. So if I was to insert a new slide, and just, just a blank slide, it doesn't have to be anything special, I could right click on this slide and hide it, but use it because it does have the ability to create text to speech. So I could say, uh, correct, click anywhere to continue, right? That'll work. This will generate an audio file, which you can then go back to your multiple choice question, select your correct caption, go to the options tab and then ha add audio, go to the library and there it is right there. Correct. Click anywhere to continue. So now when you work this multiple choice slide, you're going to you're going to hear that caption, you're going to hear that and you can see it here. A couple problems with that is that uh, closed captioning won't work. So that's that's one issue. Um, closed captioning will only exist for the slide audio that's here. So you have no way of timing closed captioning to work with all of these captions. So if you're thinking about 508 compliance and just generally being uh, compliant with accessibility standards, um, you're, any kind of audio narration, you're going to want to have closed captioning to go with it. So that's not going to work. But what I can tell you is that I've come up with uh, another solution that I think might work. I'm going to delete all of these, um, all of this stuff here, and I'm just going to drag that down to the end. So using my create your own interaction, which is really the simplest thing in the world, it's just here's your, your knowledge check or here's your quiz question, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Ottawa. You know, if you wanted to make this contribute to the quiz, just select the uh, the correct answer, and then of course you could um, include in quiz if you wish. This is I'm just using this as a knowledge check, so it doesn't matter. So I have text to speech down here, and uh, let's just run my speech management and make sure that all of these have generated the audio. So rather than having my feedback 
on the same slide as uh, in this case here my my knowledge check what I've done is I've created a feedback slide for each of the possible answers and simply put this first knowledge check if you will is really just navigation to four possible places within the course Toronto Vancouver Montreal and Ottawa is the correct answer so you would be if you click Toronto you'll go to the Toronto slide and it will say no Toronto is not the right answer please try again click try again it brings you back to the original knowledge check and you have an opportunity to select another selection if you choose Ottawa you come here and you get the feedback that's appropriate for a correct answer and the great news is, is that you've got of course closed captioning and text-to-speech as well so I can check off all of the closed captioning items making this text-to-speech uh, accessible as well so let's just do that and uh, I put a, just a final slide that illustrates that you would continue with the course at this point so we could just say uh, good job getting to the correct answer click continue to proceed there we go generate that audio close it and then check off that this will also be closed captioned as well so this should work quite well let's give it a test here In this knowledge check, answer the question. What is the capital of Canada? So let's choose it wrong first. We'll say Vancouver. No, Vancouver is not the right answer. Please try again. Okay, so we'll click try again. In this knowledge check, answer the question. What is the capital of Canada? And then, of course, let's do it correctly this time. So I'll click Ottawa. That's right. Ottawa is the right answer. Click the next button to continue. Good job getting to the correct answer. Click continue to proceed. So, so as you can see, that works rather well. The other advantage of, of putting all of the individual text-to-speech items, including the feedback and then the, uh, the summary at the end on their own individual slides, is that you'll never have audio overlapping one another. Uh, because if I click, if I'm listening to the... Uh, original narration and I'm impatient and I go ahead and click Ottawa and the caption pops up with its own text-to-speech you're going to hear two text-to-speech items overlapping one another in other circumstances you can actually stop slide audio but unfortunately in this case you can't do that at least I've never figured it out uh, maybe there's some advanced actions that could do that for you but hopefully this helps you out, Terry, and, I, and I hopefully it helps uh, everyone else out who's looking for a similar solution. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.